Hi, I'm Phil Bainbridge, and this is a quick supplementary video to help with the tool for creating a calendar event via the API. Um, so I just wanted to take you a little bit through the Google Apps script file itself. It looks like a long script, but that's just because there's so many pieces of an event that can be adjusted. So I've tried to chunk things together um, and I've added comments so it's clear what the item is it's collecting. So for a number of the things, they're just simply bits of text. So the summary is otherwise known as the title of the event, the description, the location. These are just kind of text items which could come from a cell in a Google Sheet if you wanted, or from a form maybe. And if we look a bit further down, the date and time is a bit of a fiddly bit. Um, it has to be formatted in a specific way with the date separated with the, from the time with the letter T, okay? And then we include a bit of a time zone so that we can get the right uh, um, time location. And then we need to format it a little bit like this. So we have it in the variable start and we also have one in the variable end. If we scroll down a little bit more, we have the Google Meet video conferencing. So this is where you can add Google Meet in. And if you didn't want this, you can just delete this section here, uh, but it's just creating a few kind of example things, which means the event will have video conferencing. As for the attendees, these need to be formatted in this, in this respect here. So what you can do is you can copy and repeat the line if you want to be able to add more individuals, or if you don't want to add anybody at all, then you can move this section as well. If you scroll down a little bit further, there's the option for sending the invite emails to attendees. So as I've put in the comments here, three values are accepted, all external only or none. So you would just switch out the text in there for which ones you wanted. There's then the option for guests being able to invite others, and that's just a true false value. So false means that they can't invite other people, only the organizer of the event can. Then there's the option for can guests modify the event. So again, this is a true or false value. Then we've got can guests see other guests. So again, it's a true or false value whether or not you want them to be available. If we scroll down a little bit more, we've got the show me as option where you can have either the word transparent for available or opaque for busy. So again, we just set that as a piece of text. Then we also have the option for event visibility. Now, if you set this to default, it becomes the default visibility for all events in your calendar. So that means if you share your calendar with somebody else, they may be able to see events um, different to other people. Otherwise you can specifically set it as public or private. And again, you just put the text in that variable there. Then what we do is we compile all of that information. So we're going to compile it in a variable called resource. So all of those items above here are just put into this variable ready for the calendar API. But we also have an, an arguments variable. Now this is where we include the conferencing and the email updates option. So once we're happy with all of that, we can then make the call to the calendar API and that's done via this line here. And there are three items we feed into it. The resource from above here, the calendar ID, which was the first thing we got, which is just the email address of where you want to create the events. And then the arguments that we have in here. And then what I've just done is I've captured two things from the event that's being created. Just gonna capture the event ID and log it and then I'm just going to capture the event HTML link. So in effect, you can get a clickable link, which you could put on a spreadsheet for somebody, else to be, for somebody to be able to jump into that event directly. Thank you very much.